Here we go. Strong flow in the studio. Start recording. So, this will be recording, and we're gonna go through the flow session, and we're live over there. Live over here. On Facebook, yeah. and we're live over here. All right. Goodness. Basic stuff. So start with breathing. So on your back, we're gonna spend four minutes. Breathing. All right, okay. Facebook crew, spend four minutes on your back. Breathing, you're gonna breathe in and out through your nose, and also put your hand on your belly, and that way you know you are not using your chest to breathe. This part's very important to see his belly moving up and down. In and out through his nose. This we're working on belly breathing. One in your chest, one in your stomach, and then just breathe through your nose, belly up, belly down. If your video isn't muted, go ahead and mute it for me. Got one more minute of breathing. Now, let's move on to our stomachs. And we're going to be in a tall teething watching position. Good. Big chest, long collarbone, and we're going to take chin to collarbone, chin to ceiling. Will you move the iPad? And will you try to put me on the big screen? What screen you use to move this? Take the push the push that button. Yeah. Okay, so continue to try to read through your nose. Chin down, chin up, nice and easy. We're going into our original strings resets, and inside these resets, we have breathing, we have head nods, works the vestibular system, which is basically your ears and we're getting some good, nice, healthy function through our neck. We're gonna take our head nods and we're gonna move them into over the shoulder. So you're basically, you're gonna take your chin, you look up over and try to look at your opposite heel. Nice and easy, continuing to challenge your breath only through your nose. It's quiet here in the studio because uh, we're Facebook living and um, it'll kick us off if we have music. So if you have your phone out um, or something else to play music, go to Spotify or go to anything, maybe an instrumental only. Huh? Piano guys. Piano guys? Uh -huh. Piano guys, there you go. All and right, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? 
and we're going to continue to keep looking over our shoulders. Okay. Now, we're going to take that and we're going to look left and right. So you're going to take your look down, look to the left, to the right. Continue to challenge that breath of your nose. Good, nice and easy. This isn't about a cranking stretch, so this is more about a nice easy movement. Just wherever you go, go back and go before. So it's not about getting to one point and like cranking on a stretch. All right? So we have breathing, we have head nods. Now we're gonna move into our rocking. So you're gonna go to your hands and knees. You're gonna keep your chin up, nose forward. Keep your toes tucked in underneath your heels. All right? And then I'm going to take, I'm gonna press my weight through the heels of my hands. I'm gonna rock back to my hips, go back onto the weight of my toes. And I'm just gonna rock back and forth. Rocking is the third pillar of original string three sets. And the rocking and most of the system is based off of developmental patterns. So if you think about a little baby who takes from breathing to rocking to rolling to uh, crawling to standing to sprinting, right? This is a way to reset our nervous system by remembering those developmental patterns and their low intensity. And you continue to challenge your breath through your nose, keeping your mouth closed, keeping the tongue on top of your mouth. Okay. We're gonna take that rock and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna take one leg out to the side of us. Okay, good. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna keep rocking, feeling the inside of that adductor open and close. Keeping your eyes forward, chin up, looking forward. going through maybe a dozen, 15 or so, and then we'll switch sides. Mm -hmm. Keep rocking, keep your eyes up. Good. Okay, let's transition to a half kneeling position. So when you look at half kneeling, the hip is right above the knee, and we're just gonna press those glutes together. This is not an aggressive stretch forward. This is a just keeping the hip in place and staying at 90. From here, what I want you to do is I want you to think about making circles. So I want you to take small circles of the hips, clockwise, counterclockwise, small hip circles. Think about your collarbone being center, so it's not about a tipping over with the upper body. You're trying to disassociate the hips from the ribs and trying to get some open some space. This is gonna feel really good if we've been doing a lot of sitting, a lot of couching lately, which is gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a lot of couching in the next two weeks. Half kneeling position is always a great position to go back to at any point. The longer you spend at half kneeling without an intense stretch, the better your back and hips will feel. We'll switch knees. Try to think about half kneeling, standing, sitting, and lying. Try to think about them in four parts throughout the day. So if you have eight hours of sleeping, you're lying down. You should have eight hours of, uh, of a, a standing and eight hours of a sitting, kneeling combination. So something around eight, 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 or four sets of six. Right, six hours, six hours, six hours. Spend equal amounts of time in all those positions. So it's not that sitting is bad or standing is bad or lying is bad, kneeling is bad, or any of them are specifically good, but it's going through different ones all the time throughout the day. It's gonna become really, really important the next couple of weeks as well. It's finding time to spend in all of those positions and not just default in our, um, our intense side planking on the couch. Okay. Good. Now, we're gonna keep going into that half kneeling position and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna go half kneeling windmills. So we're gonna take that half kneeling, we're gonna open 
the knee up, open the hip, and then we're gonna search for the sky. So we're gonna take half kneeling, we open, we hinge, and we look and reach, and then come back down. Knee goes down, knee goes up, knee opens. We hinge, we look and reach, and then come back up. And you just go back and forth. Half kneeling, open, hinge, reach. You get kind of fancy by knee down, knee up, hinge, look and reach. You can make it more intense by driving all the way to the ground to that forearm if you can. If not, no worries. And we're rotating, opening, closing at T-spine, opening and closing hips. And this feels really, really good. Half kneeling, wind kneels. more. And good. Let's go to a seated position. And we'll start working through our toes, knees, hips, and lower back. First thing you want to do is you can just alternate which direction your toes go. A lot of this flow reset session is all about exploring in range of motion through all of your joints without intensity. So reminding your body that your little toes, little piggies can push forward and push back, your ankles, letting all the joints inside your feet move. Okay? You can make it a little bit bigger by allowing your hips to shift width. So if I keep my collarbone square and I just let my hips move, forward and back, my calves are kind of rubbing against the ground. And if you're on turf, it feels like sandpaper. <laughs> but if you're home on the carpet, don't do this too much if it starts to get hot and the carpet burns. Just a few back and forth, feels good to reach and push, reach and push with those hips. You're kind of moving them back and forth. Okay, good. We're gonna lean back in our hands. We'll get some, we're working more internal external rotation the in and out of the hips, and you're just gonna take your toes, you're gonna to point them to your left, to your right. Yep. And you're just letting them go wherever they can go. So if it's small or if it's big, try to keep both of your glutes on the ground at all times, and you're just looking back and forth. Okay? Now we'll make it a little bit bigger. We'll bend our knees, keep a weight back on our hands, and now we will just knee in, knee out. Okay? And we're just working that internal rotation, external rotation of those hips, those ins and outs. Try to keep both glutes on the ground. You can play and find more range of motion by just bringing your heels in and away, and you get a little bit bigger. Again, this is not about cranking and stretching. So we don't want to tell the nervous system that something is bad by stretching. We just want to remind it where end range is. So where can I go? Where can I go? Over repetitions, that it may increase a little bit because of just knowing that it's safe to go there. All right. Now we'll make it a little bigger and we'll let the hips come along for the ride. So as those knees go down, we'll let the hip come up and we'll just rotate all the way through. Now we're really making a lot of big motion through the hips, through the lower back, following and moving with the chest. Getting those knees all the way to the ground and just letting those hips go wherever they want to. Okay. You can challenge yourself by keeping both hips on the ground and really pushing and flexing, pushing and flexing, pushing and flexing. So it's about pushing down, right? Not about stretching the outside. So pushing down at the inside of those legs, pushing down, pushing down. Flex, flex, flex. Remember, flex, don't stretch. Good. Okay, we're gonna take that rotation part and we're gonna go to lower body segmented rolls next. So we have inside of our pillars for original three sets, we have breathing, we have head nods, we have rocking, we have rolling. 
and we're going to go into rolling and get that get those hips and that lower back really big motion so you're going to start on your back right foot up in the air hands over your head you're going to lift your toes towards the ceiling keep them as high as possible as long as possible until your upper body falls over right and then you'll bend your knee kick it up and you'll reach 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 until your body falls and we're going to lift reach 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 and fall and we're just going to keep going back and forth Danielle, will you take that life and Facebook live and show you the comments? Oh gosh. Okay. Foot up, over. Ooh. It's like backwards. And this feels really good on the lower back. some more space. Now, we're going to stand up. We're going to roll around the ground a little bit, a lot of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to shake it out. Okay? So fast and loose. Tension drills, right? Being tight, being loose. And you're just going to take that tension and you're going to try to shake it off. Like you're trying to get the water off of your fingers, off of your toes. And I'm going to shake that water off. I'm going to shake it off my fingers. Right? Jump around a little bit. I'm going to flick it off my toes. Flick, flick, flick. And I'm just trying to get all that tension and I'm trying to literally flick it off my body. Get that tension away from me. Okay, fast and loose. Favorite, what is it? The washing machine, right? Get those hips going. Shake, 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 shake. It's good for us. It feels good. All right, now let's go back to our hands and knees. And we're going to practice some more rotation especially for that upper back and the shoulder blades. This helps with getting our neck feeling better. If you think about, I have an arm, I have a head, and the piece that's in between the arm and the head is my upper back. So the more mobile we can make that upper back, the more security and more uh, durability, more, um, more stability we can find inside of our shoulders and our neck, which is all gonna make everything feel better. So hands and knees, I'm gonna go to my forearms, I'm gonna sit back on my hips, and then I'm going to take my right hand, I'm gonna look with my chin first, I'm gonna look with my elbow, and I'm gonna open as far as I can, and then come back down. I'm gonna look at the elbow, open, come back down. I'm gonna keep rotating. Remember, it's about flexing, not stretching. Flex. Now when you're doing this, make sure that it's coming from your back, your upper back, and your chest is opening and closing, and you're not just rounding and opening this part of your hips. Okay? Open. 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 Okay? So there's rotation of the upper back. Let's go into extension and flexion, and we'll do some cat cows. So, hands and knees. You're gonna take that collarbone, drive it into your collar, your chin into your collarbone. Take the middle of your back, and like someone's pulling on a string, you're gonna pull that lower back, upper back, up towards the ceiling, round the glutes, push, press, 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 and then come back down, so it's together, arch, and look. Full range of motion, press through the ground, press to the ceiling. Press to the ground, to the ceiling. Okay. Keep going a few more. Focus on your breath through your nose. And good. Let's go back to our hips. 
we're gonna do a hip lift hold with a shift to get some opening up in those hips. So see we're going back and forth between a closed hip and an open hip position, half kneeling, rocking, and we just wanna spend time in both. So now we're going to go full hip lift. You're gonna squeeze those glutes together, get some good glute activation. And now we're just going to shift over and back. And we're just thinking about how far I can get my glutes to one side, to the other side. Press those heels through the ground, rotate. Really push those hips up towards the ceiling. Make it a little bit bigger with your rotation of your knees. And good, rest. Okay. The second one. Up, shift. And rotate. Okay. Good. Now, the last piece, last pillar of original strength resets is we're going to go into our crawling or marching. So what we're gonna do for our crawling is you're just gonna mirror me. So, if I come towards you, you go away. If I go away, you come towards me. If I go to my right, you go to your left. Whenever we're crawling, you can keep your knees on the ground or you can elevate them if you want to make them easier or harder. And chin up, eyes forward, breathe through the nose. Here we go. Keep that chin up. Okay, now let's try that with the knees off the ground. Small motions. Good. Now we'll move laterally. Time out of the screen. Yep. Just keep following me. And out, and out, and out. Eyes up. Good. I'm trying to brace those ribs and those hips so that everything stays nice and calm. Imagine you had a Basketball on your lower back, and that basketball couldn't go anywhere. Trying to balance that ball. Okay, I'm gonna move in a diagonal. You should really be feeling the bracing and those abs. Keep going diagonal back. Good. Now, let's stand up, shake out that tension again. Flick that tension away. Flick that tension away. Inside, outside. Uh huh. This may look goofy, but I'm telling you, you're going to feel a lot better. It feels good. Feels good. All right. Now, we're going to go back to our breathing. So we're gonna spend a couple minutes. We're gonna go back to our back. And you can challenge your breath a little bit in your positions by moving your arms above your body. And just focusing on that belly rising and falling. 557, we'll spend two minutes breathing.
if having your arms overhead feels like labor, feels too much work, you bring them down to your sides at a T, or even down to your hips. Whatever feels the nicest. Belly breathing, belly breathing, by the way, it's really great for one, for helping reset your nervous system, helping reduce anxiety, helping improve gut health, and uh, also allowing your brain to kind of center for a second, especially if there's no noise, there's no distractions, there's no music, it really allows you to kind of get uncomfortable with your thoughts, which is really great for centering ourselves. If you have a problem breathing through your nose only during belly breathing, that can be a telltale sign of some health issues. Maybe some inflammation issues or some blockages that need to be taken care of. Okay, good. It's a couple minutes of breathing. Uh, Zoom, give me one second. We have been um, streaming live. Into. Oh. Yeah. On. My braids kept falling in the camera. So into our group there. Yeah. Coaches have been joining along back there. So, Facebook. Hold yeah. on. Facebook. Uh, if you enjoyed that, give us a thumbs up down below. Give us a clap, a clap. And if you want to see, if you want to run through this on your own again, just put your name down below and I will send you the recorded version of this from, um, from YouTube and you can rewatch it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed, if you feel better after this, let us know below. Thanks.